This year, we dreamed of world peace. We dreamed of deep breaths and restful sleep. We dreamed of love that lasts and suffering that passes. We dreamed of doors open wide and a cure to disease. We dreamed because to dream is to believe. For to dream is to hope, to dream is to see. So make room in your being to dream yet again of a world without fear and a God who draws near. For it is almost Christmas. Love is almost here. May we dream to see and hope to believe. Let us worship holy God. beginning, God dreamed of a beautiful world. In Egypt, the Israelites dreamed of freedom. In the wilderness, the people dreamed of safety. In Jerusalem, the people dreamed of a Messiah. In Bethlehem, the shepherds and wise men dreamed of a new beginning. Then, several years later, Jesus walked this earth and dreams came true. The sick were healed, the poor had food, the forgotten and ignored were seen, the children were welcomed. Everyone was invited to the table and the world has never been the same. So tonight we are those who dream. Tonight we dream the same dreams of our ancestors before us. Tonight we dream of justice and mercy, of love and kindness of peace and hope. Tonight we dream of a God that draws near to us out of unfailing love. May this candle be a reminder that there will be a day when every dream will be fulfilled. And until then, we will be those who dream. Let us worship holy God. Amen.
ever-present God. From time to time, we dream radical dreams. We dream of freedom for the imprisoned, food for the hungry, and equality for all. We dream bold, radical dreams until the world tells us that these dreams are impossible. And when that happens, we are tempted to tuck our dreams into coat pockets and let them collect dust on the shelves of our hearts. Forgive us for giving up so easily. Forgive us for giving up so easily, for on this night we remember and celebrate a radical dream that you dwelled among us. Give us courage to dust old dreams off the shelf with confidence that with you, the impossible is possible. With you, a light always shines in the darkness. With you, even an unwed couple and a band of shepherds can bring joy to the world. Thanks be to God for a dream like that. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. All-powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
God. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the angels sing. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the bleats of sheep following shepherds and the hooves of confused barn animals. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the innkeeper saying, no room. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the star whisper, follow me. If we listen closely, God, we can almost hear you. So as we turn to your word, holy writer, don't let us miss a thing. The smell of the hay, the cool of the air, the way Mary cherished a wild dream in her heart. We want to hear it all. So today we pray, can you help us listen closely? Amen. The first reading from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood, shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello friends, Psalm 96 is a happy, happy song of gratitude and praise. It's also a song about singing. How about that? Before I teach you the piece, here's how the chorus goes. Sing a new song to God, all the earth. The psalm says, sing a new song to God, all the earth. So, all the earth, I guess this is not just a song for people to sing but maybe it's for caterpillars and frogs and whales also, all the earth, maybe even the, the mountains and the fields and the oceans, huh? And the other part I wanna draw your attention to before we sing the song, sing a new song. What is it like to sing a new song? Well, if a song is new to you, it's one you don't know yet, or you're just learning. It's something that you're discovering. It's fresh from a blank slate. It's never been sung before. I wonder what that feels like to you today, to be part of the invitation, sing a new song to God, all the earth. This is a song with a refrain and a couple verses that I'll do. Your part goes like this, ready? Sing a new song for God, all the earth. Sing a new song, sing a new song. Sing a new song for God, all the earth. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. Ready? One, two, three. Sing a new song for God, all the earth. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. Sing a new song for God, all the earth. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. Nice. Here's a verse. Declare God's glory and bless God's name. Tell the story day after day that God is coming, oh, God is coming, oh. Sing a new song, sing a new song for God on the earth. Sing a new song, sing a new song, sing a new song for God on the earth. 
song for God all the earth sing a new song sing a new song you know the melody to this next verse sing it with me let the sky and earth be glad creatures of the earth and land come and make a joyful noise everything that has a voice let the sky and earth be glad creatures of the sea and land sing a new song here we go sing a new song for god all the earth sing a new song sing a new song sing a new song for god all the earth sing a new song sing a new song this one has a familiar melody too the fields are celebrating in their joy the crops are waving and the forests sing in rhythm every tree can hold the vision sing a new song sing a new song for god all the earth sing a new song sing a new song sing a new song for god all the earth sing a new Sing a new song. The second reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. <clears throat> and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. 
Because Joseph was faithful to the law and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But an angel of God appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people. All this took place to fulfill what God had said through the mouth of the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Amen. I'm not quite sure how we pulled it off, but we did. A pastor, a young pastor with big ideas, some willing parents, and together we talked the high school youth group into performing alongside the traditional Sunday school program. It was a comedy called This Is So Embarrassing about a high school youth group performing the Sunday School Christmas program. And somehow it worked. We laughed, we heard the message of good news of Jesus born, and we had a lot of fun along the way. But I tell you that so that I can tell you what happened one night during dress rehearsal. Actually, just as dress rehearsal was ending. Young Rick, who had been cast in the role of Joseph, approached me and said, Pastor, would you mind if I took the manger home and fixed it? It's pretty wobbly, and I just don't think Joseph would lay the baby Jesus, would lay his son in a wobbly manger. Oh yes, dear Rick, at 15, you have embodied the steady, faithful character of Joseph. And sure enough, by Sunday morning, that manger was in its place, no more wobble. And as Rick laid Jesus down, he beamed with the glow, the awe of a new father. Through this Advent at Bethany, we have been considering a long line of dreamers each in their own way who make the Christmas story possible. And all along, I've been struggling with the fact that Joseph was not given a day. He was not given a role in this lineup. So I gave him one. Tonight, I'm supposed to invite you to consider your place as a dreamer. But I think Joseph gives us the perfect window through which to do just that. More than any other year, this year, 2020, we are all Joseph. You see, things were going okay for him. Not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but okay. He was secure enough to be engaged, and so we know that he had a comfortable place to live. He was secure enough economically to be dreaming of growing his family, and he was engaged to a nice, faithful woman from a good Jewish family. His dreams were within reach. And then the blows started coming. First, that perfect partner asks him to believe the impossible, some story about an angel and God being born into the world. All he knew was that she was pregnant and he was not the father. But whatever he believed about her, he wasn't willing to shame her or put her through a public trial. He decided to do the honorable thing, to end the engagement quietly to let them go their separate ways, 
it was best for both of them, right? He could be kind, but he didn't want to get tangled into that kind of drama. All he wanted was a simple, quiet, ordinary, comfortable life. So he thought he had it figured out, but that night he tossed and turned and turned and tossed. And I think we've all had our share of sleepless nights this year, wondering what faithfulness looks like in a sea of bad choices, of, of not good choices. Somehow it wasn't a surprise when the angel showed up that night. Oh, Joseph. You may have plans, but God has dreams for this world, the angel said. And God needs your help to make them a reality. And in that moment, Joseph's sense of right and wrong, his plans, they all gave way to God's. He believed the impossible thing that the angel told him. And he took Mary home to be his wife. After all, it is through him that prophecy can be fulfilled. The child will be born of the house of David. If Joseph believes the angel, then the story as we know it can unfold. Mary will have a home. Her son will have a name and a family lineage. But if Joseph does not believe, then it all grinds to a halt. If Joseph wakes from the dream and shakes his head, then Mary is an outcast forever. At best, she's left to survive however she can, feeding herself and that child with whatever she can beg or steal. And so all of eternity rests on this man's shoulders this ordinary, faithful man. According to Matthew, Joseph is as essential to the story as Mary. It takes both parents to bring this miracle to fruition. Mary to give him birth, and Joseph to give him a name and a life. At the heart of this story is a just man who wakes up one day to find his life wrecked, his trust betrayed, his name on the verge of ruin, and his plans crumbling. And then comes a government order, just to make it more complicated. The details may be different, but I really do think that we all have some part of Joseph in us this year going about our lives, trying to be good people, working hard, reaching toward our goals. And then the blows, a pandemic, economic insecurity, illness, isolation, and for too many of us, death and grief. So many losses, big and small. So much uncertainty. It's hard to know what faithful looks like when you're just trying to make it through each day. It's hard to know where God is when the things we hold dear, the things that keep us rooted and grounded in who we are, those things that are so important, like going to church, gathering with friends and family, being part of beloved community events. It's so hard to know where God is when those are the very things that we have to let go for a while. I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you what Joseph did. He looked at the mess around him, and he decides to believe that God is in it. with every reason to walk away in search of an easier, cleaner, more conventional, ordinary life, Joseph claims the mess, <laughs> and he gives it his name. 
And that mess is where the Messiah is born into this world. Into the mess is where we first meet Emmanuel, the God who is with us. This year, 2020, Joseph is the dreamer I'm watching. He's the quiet man on the margins of the story, the one we know so little about that tradition has had to fill in all kinds of details. He's the one most like us, presented day by day with circumstances beyond his control, impacted by choices he had no voice in making, tempted to walk away from it all, when an angel whispers in his ear, do not fear, God is here. Hear the angel whisper into your ear, do not fear, God is here. God is here and God has a dream and you are part of it if you choose. God's birth, God's dream, needs human partners, Mary and Joseph and you and me and all of us who are willing to believe impossible things, who are willing to claim a mess, who are willing to give it our name and our protection, willing to hold it with tired, calloused hands, and rock it gently to nurture it and help it grow and help it become a reality. And not just each of us individually, but the whole church of God, seeing a world that seems to have run amok and proclaiming over and over again to anyone willing to hear that God is still with us when we are exhausted and emptied out and have nothing left to give, when we're numb, when we're anxious, when we're tossing and turning all night, when we feel lost and alone and abandoned, God is still being born into the mess within and among all those who still believe the good news an angel whispers to them in their dreams. And when we can't dream and don't know how to believe, the church of God reminds us of the dream and of our essential role in it. And no one of us can fix the whole mess. But when we see the wobbly manger, Maybe we can tend that. Maybe the cradle that holds Jesus, maybe we can make it stronger. Maybe we can reinforce it. Maybe we can take our part in making a house for God so that that light that is born into the darkness can shine for all to see. Maybe. Just maybe we can dream that dream. And when that dream becomes a reality, maybe we can believe the next dream. And on and on and on. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel commanded him. He took her as his wife, but knew her not until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. Let us pray. Oh, great dreamer, we come to you tonight with dreams tucked into our pockets, admitting that at times it feels too risky to dream. At times it feels risky to ask for too much, to believe in that which we cannot see. So instead, we make wishes on stars and search for luck in clover fields. 
Instead of sinking into you, we try to control the narrative. However, somewhere rumbling deep in our heart, there is a dream of a better world, trapped like a caged bird. Open our eyes to see you in our midst. Open our eyes to see you in the mess and give us the confidence of Mary to sing into the mystery. Give us the faithfulness of Joseph to claim our role. Dust your dream off for us off the shelves of our hearts until once more we are those who dream. Amen.
As we celebrate Christmas, let us praise God for the birth of our Savior and pray for all in need, responding to each petition with the words, Your mercy is great. Mighty and merciful God, we praise you for bringing your word to birth among us. Strengthen with your spirit all the baptized, so that even where the faithful cannot assemble together for worship safely, the whole church can together honor the birth of Jesus. Hear us, O God, our Redeemer. Your mercy is great. We praise you for your created earth, the stars in the sky, the animals in stables, the flocks in the fields. Show us your majesty in the brightness of day and the darkness of night. Rouse our care for your magnificent creation. Hear us, O God, our creator. Your mercy is great. We praise you for each day that knows peace and welcomes justice. Inspire leaders of nations to seek peace where there is war and violence. Guard ambassadors, relief workers, and military personnel the world over. Visit both the Palestinians and the Israelis and protect the many peoples who live under military rule. Make our own streets avenues of peace. Hear us, O God, our sovereign. Your mercy is great. We praise you for the benefits of light available in our homes and shining on our trees. Accompany those who enjoy no such light and protect all who labor in the darkness on behalf of others. Hear us, O God, our light. Your mercy is great. We praise you for new parents with their newborns and for the, the joys of family of every shape and size. Visit the homes where there is sickness or sorrow. Abide with people who live isolated from others. And bless the children who this year receive no gifts. Hear us, O God, our treasure. Your mercy is great. We praise you for every sign of your loving presence. And we pray for all who suffer. Heal the sick. Feed the hungry. Shelter the homeless and the refugee. Visit those imprisoned. Comfort those who mourn. Hear us, O God, our Savior. Your mercy is great. We praise you for the development of coronavirus vaccines. We pray for the millions who are affected with COVID-19. Uphold physicians, nurses, and all healthcare workers Provide medical care for everyone. Be with those who endure hardships and see that there is a fair and equitable and quick distribution of the vaccines. Hear us, O oh God, our healer. Your mercy is great. We praise you, the almighty God born on the earth, and so you transformed the cosmos. Come to each of us and receive the prayers we offer to you now. Hear us, O God, our beloved. Your mercy is great. We praise you for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed, especially those we remember in our hearts. With them, let us sing your praise now and forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. To you, mighty God, Prince of Peace, wonderful counselor, we offer our praises for your grace upon grace. Receive our prayers in the name of the one who was born to live and die and rise again for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. you to join me in sharing the affirmation of faith. We believe in hope. We believe that to hope is to dream with our eyes wide open. We believe in peace. We believe that peace is not found by accident. Prepare the way. We believe in joy. We believe that joy is angel choruses and gifts from the Magi, as well as soul food, big tables, candlelight, fireside, and the body of Christ gathered as one. We believe in love. We believe that God loves us so much that God could not stay away. So God showed up as a child. We believe that that love is real and we know that it changes us. Therefore, we believe in the power of dreams, and we believe that nightmares, which are all too real here and now, will have no place in God's promised day. Until then, we believe in passing the light, in showing up and doing the work, in listening for angel choruses, and in learning from the youngest among us. We believe. Help our unbelief. Amen.
as you go. May you have the strength to dream wild dreams of justice, peace, and love that overflows. May you have the humanity to listen to the dreams of others. May you have the confidence to trust that God, who heard the cries of the Israelites in Egypt, hears your dreams as well. And may you have the conviction to return to this space, for our best dreams are those we dream together. In the name of God, the original dreamer, Jesus, the dream come true, and the Holy Spirit who enables us to be those who dream. Go in peace. Go in love. God is with us. Amen. Oh,